as well. Austin IMB um, CEO and um, janitor and um, shorter cook here at uh, Fight Back Media. Thank you for coming to our YouTube channel. And uh, just like always, if you like what we do, please subscribe, uh, hit that uh, notification button, and share with your friends. We appreciate it because what we're here to do is to help you. And remember, we don't have a marketing budget. You are our marketing budget. Thank you ever so much for spending some time with us here today. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about something that, you know, people like me get all the time. They're always curious. How did you get to where I am politically and socially? Um, well, the short answer is that I knew that there was something amiss um, in, in the delivery room when my son was born some 30 years ago. I knew that there was something amiss. I, I, was, I was missing something. Something wasn't connecting. Um, when I was in college, I had mentioned to a group of friends because I had, I was, I'm, I've always been blessed with the ability to have people listen to and respect what I, you know, what I would say when ask ask a question, and um, and I said, you know, on the abortion issue, uh, I was one of those, you know, it's one of those people um, in college that said that, that if you are against abortion, don't have one. And I thought, and and I, and of course, in my you know, youth and smugness, what it is and smugness, that you thought, well, that answers the question, and that should be fine for everybody. Except when it was my own kid, and what I noticed is, and what I I learned was that an abortion um, is just a term for murdering a child. So now I had this disconnect, right? Now I'm holding this baby that for us you know was always a baby was never an embryo was never and he was never just an idea it was always a baby so while that was going on uh it, it, it was especially frankly it was especially difficult to just say you know just say you know eh. i had to take this child seriously this was a child it was not anything other than a child and my son had never been anything other than a child a child the whole time he was not an embryo he was not a he was never a clump of cells ever a clump of cells he was always a child so that really made a huge difference and i knew that there was a dis that there was an obvious disconnect right so i started exploring lots of things and where and my political beliefs were one of the things that we started exploring you know i like a lot of people my age my culture thought we were democrat thought i was a democrat because my parents were Democrats, everybody I knew was a Democrat, I learned that Republicans were rich people, namely rich white people. I never even considered that I might be a, a Republican. What? I had <laughs> it's funny, never considered it. However, when I learned about the pro-life movement, and as, again, I went through these changes in my life, I decided, you know, I, I figured out that, guess what? I'm probably more aligned politically. And even at that point in my life, spiritually, with people on the right as opposed to people on the left. And at the time, I wasn't even using the, I, I wasn't even aware of those phrases, you know, right and left. I wasn't even sure of those phrases, really. Or what they meant but in any case we um, started really to concentrate on those on, on trying to figure that out um, I think at some point when I I had to re-register 
to vote because I hadn't voted in a, a thousand years, a long time. And uh, I think I, either before or shortly afterwards, um, after casting a ballot for George Bush, um, because I voted for Bill Clinton the, the time before, uh, I think that that's when I changed my party affiliation to Republican. That's that's the story I tell everybody else, um, because that's the short story, which didn't seem like it, but that's the short story. Um, but as I as I grew and as I learned, it started to get even more specific. Uh, a number of uh, a number of years ago, when we started the podcast back in two thousand eight, and shortly thereafter, I met some I met some guys. I, I was blessed enough to meet some people people like. Um, C.L. Bryant, uh, and um, Alfonso Rachel, uh, and um, Francis Rice, uh, some, Ms., Mrs. Francis Rice Esquire. Um, I was able to, uh, to meet and connect with some folks that helped me along this journey, and believe me, it is a journey. It's an ever-increasing journey, and it's an, it, I mean, it really is an ever-increasing learning-wise journey. You, I mean, you're always learning. You're always figuring things out so i did that i also happened to be blessed enough to meet a gentleman by the name of k carl smith k carl smith uh at the time led a, a leads a move at the time and still does leads a movement called the frederick douglas republicans now it was a completely i mean it was, it was complete uh, what is that um who is that? What is that about um, for me? Because I didn't know anything really about Frederick Douglass. When I thought of Frederick Douglass, I thought of the big white afro, which I was really trying to get. Didn't really come out all that well. Uh, however, I, what I didn't know what was who, who Frederick Douglass was and what, and what he was about. But what I learned early from K. Carl Smith. And you can contact K. Carl. Um, I'm going to put K. Carl's information right there so you can have access to it. Um, was there are four life affirming values to be a Frederick Douglass Republican. The first of them are, are is Respect for the U.S. Constitution. Respect for the U.S. Constitution. Well, and that makes sense because that's the basis of our nation. That is the basis. That is the uh, jumping off point. That is the foundation of where we live, of this republic. Douglas had uh, an affirming uh, respect for the U.S. Constitution. And what it represented. The second one is respect for life. Douglas also had a supreme respect for human life. After coming from slavery, um, life was very important. He saw horrific, like anybody then, saw horrific tragedies and horrific horror that was involved in the you know what during that during those periods of time. And developed a um, over his life a, an abundant respect for life in general, and my connection with my son being born and my past opinion about child murder, abortion, respect for life resonated with me a lot. Uh, also, um, something that I, I didn't understand early, but a belief in limited government. How government, and as, I, as I learned, has be, had become a bigger, bigger, more pervasive and invasive part of an average citizen's daily anything, and how that had not, that should not be so. And the founders never considered that the government would, would be involved in people's lives to the, to the degree it is today, federal government or local government even. Um, and also a belief in personal responsibility. 
connected with the birth of my son. One of the, after the joy of holding the little boy, you know, who was obviously ever, I'm wearing a black shirt because my son was obviously allergic to a clean white shirt. Ever hold him on your way to work? Remember that? Yeah, happened almost every morning. Uh, if I wore a clean white shirt, so I would, I, I would, I, I would, and it started then, 30 years ago. So you've seen, I have got an entire wardrobe of everything but a clean, but a clean white shirt. You've never seen me in one of these videos in, in a white shirt, I don't think. And that's the reason. We all have little baby puke stains on them. <laughs> in any case, um, I knew that there was an extreme responsibility it was it, it was overwhelming for a moment but i was personally responsible for everything that this kid learned everything that happened to him i was responsible for personal responsibility and the fourth and again that's the fourth life affirming um, values of being a frederick Douglass republican now notice what's not there there's nothing about race there's really nothing about policy. There's nothing expressly about economics. Douglas eliminates race from this. Respect for the Constitution, respect for life, belief in limited government, and belief in personal responsibility. Douglas eliminates race. Even coming through slavery, uh, you, you you can you can go ahead and and research gov uh, research Douglas was a um, an advisor to President Lincoln and pushed for the, emancipa the for him to 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 sign the Emancipation Proclamation that ended up ending slavery. So. And this is important, too, because a lot of people get this wrong. They think that people who say they're Frederick, Frederick Douglass Republicans are some sect of the uh, Republican Party. And no, it is K. K. Carl Smith's thought that it is separate. It is my thought that only it only is it, is it just not separate. It is a, it's in rarefied air. The GOP is here. Frederick Douglass Republicans are up here. It's a cleaner, pure Republican. There you go. Um, you, and you can get this. I'm going to show you the, the cover of this. It says, Frederick Douglass Republicans, it's not about color, it's about values. Written by K. Carl Smith, Liberty Messenger. You can get this uh, from the um, address and phone number that I'm going to uh, put on the screen. You can get this. And it's got great information that I'm going to read some of it to you here in this video. All right. Um. Because it's, because it's information that nobody's nobody's saying nobody's and nobody taught you either. I don't care when you went to school. Nobody taught you this. I don't even care where you went to school. Nobody taught you this. Um, one of the important parts of the book uh, starts off with "Why am I a Frederick Douglass Republican?" Here's Douglass. I am a Republican, a black dyed in the wool Republican. And I never intend to belong to any other party other than the party of freedom and progress. Freedom and progress. The Republican Party was founded from the abolitionist movement. This was Frederick Douglass. So again, um, it reads... Some people uh, assume incorrectly uh, that the expression Frederick Douglass Republican 
refers to a minority subgroup, some weird sect of the GOP, and that has nothing to do with its to do with racial separation. Well, all those Frederick Douglass Republicans are all black. That's the that, that's the the black GOP. That's not true. Because most, because a good number, I won't say most, but a good number of people that consider themselves Frederick, Frederick Douglass Republican were white. I, that I've met all along. And I'm pretty sure that K. Carl would agree with me. Because it's not about colors. It's about it's color. It's about value. It's about values. It's not about color. It's about values. It's about the values that I told you about. That's what it's about. All right. The phrase Frederick Douglass Republicans is an all-inclusive political platform based on, again, the four life-empowering values of Frederick Douglass. Respect for the Constitution, respect for life, belief in limited government, and belief in personal responsibility. As with the turn of phrases, um, Tea Party conservative, Reagan conservative, Frederick Douglass uh, Republican is a political point of view and a rallying call to defend liberty. What began as a mantra now has developed into a nationwide political movement, catching the attention of thousands of Americans regardless of their race. Any person may become a Federalist Republican because it is not about color, it's about values. MAGA. You can add MAGA to this. this this was printed before MAGA and before Trump, so. And we and we already see that all these things that I mentioned, or K. Carl mentions in this booklet, are about values. They're not about color. They're not about race. And if I could break off for a second, this is what drives the left nuts. Because there is unity on values that supersedes any unity on race. That the people who connect on values aren't even concerned with the race of the people they're connecting with because values are greater than color. Values are greater than color. And this drives people uh, on, on the left nuts because what they can't do is separate you by race. They can't separate you by race. Well, they can't separate you by race. Uh, they can't. They can't lie to you because you don't agree with someone because you happen to look like them. You agree with them because you happen to believe like them. And you can't attack that. You have to attack the belief. And that's too difficult to do. Once people are, are, are together spiritually, the way, it's really hard. Really tough. You know, early in the book, K. Call, part of his testimony is how this happened. How he got to where he got. Remember, I, I told you how I got to where I got. This is, you know, his trip is, 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 is a lot simpler but a lot more powerful than my own. He says, God delivered me from my self-oppressive, politico-schizophrenic politico mindset by taking me through the following process. It's broken down into two steps. Level one, living by feelings. And we see that a lot today, don't we? We see a lot of people living by, I feel this, I feel this, and... And this person hurt my feelings with a mean tweet. And feelings, feelings, feelings. Remember? And then level two. Living by faith. He talks about level one like this. Living by feelings. When I was a child, I taught like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I stopped those childish ways. First, First Corinthians thirteen eleven. 
So this child, this this childish, immature, faithless level. At this level, my reasoning and critical thinking skills were nowhere to be found, and that's what we see in the left. It, 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 they just refuse to look at situations and think their way through them. It's always about the initial ouch. It's always about the initial ouch. And we have to be careful that we don't feel, that, that we don't fall in, we don't feel, start feeling feelings, nothing more than feelings, the same way when we get challenged. We shouldn't have to operate on, I feel a certain way about anything. You either, we either believe what we believe or we don't. If we believe it, we act on it. If we believe it, we act like it. That's all there is to it. So if you've got an entire political system based on feelings, you know that facts don't matter to them. And there are some serious facts that we need to get to. Um, let's talk about inclusion and participation in the um, in a political system because there's a group of right now and we've talked about this on the morning report, on the morning report of Texas lawmakers that are out in front of cameras pretending, literally, pretending like women don't have the right to write right the vote in this country yet. Or blacks don't have the right to vote in this country yet. No, they have not said that directly. But they're sort of pretending that's the Sort of in, insinuating that's the case because they have to fight for their rights to vote. They don't. Everybody in Texas can vote. Men, women. Because that's all it is. There's only men and women. There's no. There's nothing else. Let's talk about some of the things that you've not heard about. In 1872, slavery was abolished in Washington, D.C. Excuse me, 1872. 1862. In 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation was issued, freeing all slaves from the southern states. In 1864, the Fugitive Slave Law was abolished, and that was important because what would happen is that people would it, it, it would people would run off, and then the slave, you know, owners of the of plantation people would go chasing them, and they still had right to do so. Hmm. So the next year, the, the Fugitive Slave Law was abolished. That probably should have happened the, the other way around. And that might have broken the black the back of slavery too, but in nineteen excuse me eighteen sixty five the Freedmen's Bureau was passed. The law formed a federal agency that set up schools and hospitals for Black Americans. They distributed clothes, food, and fuel throughout the South. In eighteen sixty five, the Thirteenth Amendment was passed. The amendment officially abolished slavery in the United States. Now, what's amazing is that there are few places in the world that officially abolished slavery. Other places abolished the slave trade, but did not officially ab abolish slavery, which means that they couldn't get any more slaves in or indentured servants. But the practice continued. The United States is one of the few countries that actually abolished slavery and said, no more slavery here. In 1865, the 14th Amendment was passed. This amendment declared the former slaves were full citizens of the state in which they lived and were therefore entitled to all the rights and privileges of any citizen of the state. And that's what the 14th Amendment is all about. The 14th Amendment isn't about having anchor children. Anchor babies. And that's how it's been bastardized. No, it was for the former slaves. 
in those states. Now, why was it said that way? Because it, it, in 1868, it was the states that were driving the boat. It was the, it was the states that were driving the bus. So you were still, although you were a citizen of the United States, you were first a citizen of Virginia or Georgia or New York. I know Hampshire. You were first a citizen of the state. Then the states were part of this union. They called the United the United States, and that was the mentality. And I think that that's probably a mentality that it would probably do us really good to go back to. It would probably do us a lot of good to go back to that. But in the 14th Amendment said that, you know, if you were a state that were, if you were a slave uh, that was living in Virginia or you were living in Georgia or you're living in South Carolina, you had all the rights of any citizen living in that state. That was important. And because this happened, there were uh, there was something that was pretty amazing that happened. In Texas, the first 42 blacks elected to the state legislature were Republican. In Louisiana, the first 95 black state representatives and the first 32 black senators were Republicans. In Alabama, the first 103 blacks elected to the state legislature were Republicans. In Mississippi, the first 112. In South Carolina, the first 190. In Virginia, the first 46. In Georgia, the first 41 blacks um, that were elected were all Republicans. In Florida and, Cal and North Carolina, the first 30 blacks elected to the state legislatures were Republican. So when somebody asked me, Willie, why, why are you a Republican? It's my heritage. It is my heritage. To be a Democrat is, is my recent history, but my heritage, my heritage is Republican. Does that make sense? Does it make sense to you now? Let's talk about some other folks. Write, write this down. Hiram Rhodes Revel from Mississippi was America's first black U.S. Senator. He was an ordained minister in the AME, AME Church, that's American, excuse me, African Methodist Episcopal, um, and served as a chaplain during the Civil War. He, he was also president of Alcorn State University. And then there was Benjamin Turner, from Alabama. He was a slave during the Civil War, but within five years after the war, he became a wealthy and prosperous businessman. He also started a school for black children. Robert DeLarge from South Carolina was born into, was born into slavery. He chaired the Republican Party's platform committee and became a statewide elected official. Also served as a state rep from the state of South Carolina. Josiah Walls from Florida was a slave during the Civil War and forced to fight for the Confederate Army. After being captured by the Union troops, he promptly enlisted as a Union soldier and became an officer. Jefferson Long from Georgia was born a slave. He was self-educated and built a thriving business. He was the first black American uh, to deliver a congressional speech in the U.S. Senate. He served for one session of the 41st Congress. It is my heritage. It is my heritage to be a Republican. Now, what kind of Republican I'm going to be, up to me. 
in the second part of this video, we're going to talk about uh, and, and and people ha and people have a, a and this is a I'm, I'm saying this is a really good question. This is a really good concern. When you ask, is the Republican Party from the time I'm talking about the same as the Republican Party that we see now? We're going to talk about that right after these messages. I'm going to tell you what's going on. I was part of the Reagan revolution as part of the Tea Party movement. I was part of the Trump revolution. There is a massive movement afoot. Uh, it's not under the radar. People just aren't looking at it. Uh, the silent majority is not going to be silent anymore. The American people are furious with what's happening to their country. And by American people, I mean all American people who love this country, regardless of their color, their religion, their background, red-blooded Americans. They are sick and tired of what they've seen in the first six months of this administration. They don't like the way they're being treated by the elites in the media. They don't like being looked down upon by these phony professors who they bring on TV who trash them. Uh, they are disgusted with the teachers' unions. Parents all over this country can't believe what's happened to elementary schools and secondary schools. Parents go broke to send their kids to college, and now they're coming home on Thanksgiving or other days, and they don't know what's happened to them. We are paying for our own demise with tenured Marxist professors and administrators for schools that are turning on our founding and our history. Americans love their history. Americans love their history, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Americans are sent all over the world to fight wars for people who do not look like them. America's borders are wide open. We have a president of the United States who is violating our immigration laws, who signs executive orders like he's Benito Mussolini. We're sick and tired of hearing from San Francisco Nancy Pelosi and New York City uh, Chuck Schumer what they intend to do to our court system. Those courts belong to us attacking separation of powers and our constitutional construct. We're tired of the way the family is trashed in this country, the family. We're tired of the way private property rights are treated in this country. We're tired of a lot of things going on in this country. Now we, the people, we are peaceful. You won't find us running around with Molotov cocktails. You won't find us attacking cops. We defend the cops. You won't find us burning cities and so forth and so on. We're not mostly peaceful. We're 100% peaceful. But we are pissed off, and we have had enough, and we're done talking about it. The idea that a book like this sells 400,000 copies in one week and is well on the way to a half a million, I've been in these movements before. I saw what happened with liberty and tyranny in the Tea Party movement. We know our history. We are a great people, and we have people in this country who haven't contributed a damn thing to it, and not a damn thing to it trying to tear it down and redistribute wealth. They sound like they're soapbox Marxists going on and on about, we don't provide this, we don't provide that, and Bernie Sanders is going to provide it, and AOC is going to provide it. They don't know a damn thing about this country. They use the, the benefits of capitalism to attack liberty to attack liberty. They use the Constitution to attack the Constitution. Scare of 1970. Remember the swine flu scare of 1976? That was the year the U.S. government told us all that swine flu could turn out to be a killer, and Washington decided that every man, woman, and child in the nation should get a shot to prevent a nationwide outbreak, a pandemic. Well, 46 million of us obediently took the shot. Did anyone ever come to you and say, there's the possibility of neurological damage if you get into a mass immunization program? No. No one ever did? No. I can't believe that they would say that they did not know that there were neurological illnesses associated with influenza vaccination. That simply is not true. We did know that. Uh, and he's lying. I guess you would have to um, make that assumption. Then why does this report from your own agency list neurological complications as a possibility? You didn't feel it was necessary to tell the American people that information. Dr. Sensor CDC also helped create the advertising to get the public to take the shot. The vaccines are safe, so roll up your sleeve. And now the Americans are claiming damages from Uncle Sam amounting to three and a half billion dollars. By far the greatest number of the claims, two-thirds of them, are for neurological damage or even death. Remember the swine flu scare? Well, you know, thank you for um, looking at our, our, uh, our little commercial there and um, checking, out, checking out the people who... Uh, that we, you know that we that we support. If again, if you are interested in the A uh, the Icon A5, send me a, 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 an email 
uh, at a icon a5 info at gmail.com icon icon a5 info at gmail.com we'll get you flying it's the coolest thing ever isn't it all right before the break we had you know questions about how can you be part of the Republican Party now because the Republican Party um, back in Douglas's time is different than the Republican Party now um, and two people will mention this you know, the Southern strategy and the switch and all this stuff, that never happened. However, um, Kay Carl and a lot of Frederick, Frederick Douglass Republicans believe this, and I'm, I'm amongst them. This is, today's Republican Party does not resemble the Republican Party of Douglass's day. It doesn't. It's gotten off track. And here's how it's gotten off track. By treating the party as a country club and basically catering to the concerns of the corporate elite. In fact, both parties have a history of bailing out corporate giants that are labeled as too, remember the phrase, too big to fail? While overlooking the pain and suffering of the poor and working poor. In 2009, the Obama administration rescued Wall Street bankers with a loan of 850 billion dollars. You remember, right? In 2008. But in 2008, the George W. Bush administration supported financial giant um, Bear Stearns with a $30 billion bailout. In 1989, President George H.W. Bush signed the Financial um, Institution Reform and Recovery and Enforcement Act, which bailed out the savings and loan institutions to the amount of 293 billion dollars. In 1980, uh, President uh, uh, Jimmy Carter signed the Chrysler Loan Guarantee Act, which provided Chrysler with a loan of $1.5 billion. If the, if the giant financial corporations are, quote, too big to fail, then the poor and the working poor are too big to fail. Both parties, both Republican and Democrat, um, have failed to adhere to the principles of the Constitution and the values of the Declaration of Independence. The goal of the Frederick Douglass Republicans movement is to help the modern day Republican Party recapture its political distinction and become the vanguard of Douglass's for life empowering values, thereby igniting America's passion for liberty. Yes, and it is ridiculous to think that that all you have to do is vote in a Republican and now you're back to the Constitution. And we have seen that that is not the case. We have seen that that, that isn't the case. And it's up to us, me and you, you too, Paul, and others, to continue to remind the Republican Party that it is indeed those four life-empowering values that are going to return this nation, first of all, this party, and then this nation back and have a, have a, passion, a passion for liberty. Because that passion is the fire that burns and the light that burns in the, in, in, you know, in the torch of, of the, um, Statue of Liberty that draws people here. That's why they want to be here. They want to be free. They, they want to enjoy liberty. And unless we get back to what, what we should be doing, as it is laid out in the Constitution, there can't be that liberty. There can't be that liberty. So again, we'll talk more about this as time goes on. Uh, I have on the um, on the podcast channel um, a number of interviews with um, K. Carl Smith, and um, you can access them by just going to Blog Talk Radio and and typing in K. Carl K. Period uh, Carl Smith and Frederick Frederick Douglass, Frederick Douglass Republicans. You can see a lot of his videos you can hear a lot of his podcasts and the cool thing about k carl is that he is ultra ultra cool um but with a white 
hot intensity about freedom and liberty. So again, you can access this information right here. There you go. Access the information right here. Let's get it started. Let's get it going. My name is William Lawson. This uh, this is a special uh, video from uh, Fightback Media, our Fightback Media Group. Uh, until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We'll see you when we see you. Bye-bye now.